Hello, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Aurora 4X. Um, so, last episode, we had located and crippled two Precursor ships in Rockhampton. Um, I've gone ahead and skipped a little bit uh, until the Crete and our squadron of boarding shuttles had arrived. And we are now in a position to move in and attempt to capture the two ships. Uh, we have plenty of carrier support as well, so worst case scenario, um, if they're about to break down or if they're in too poor shape, uh, we can always repair them there. So uh, we are going to take the Crete and we are going to take the shoal water and we are going to uh, move them together to get them into position to um, get some um, get, get in a position to do those boarding ops. So first thing I'm going to do is we're going to head back towards Townsville uh, the, to the towards the Townsville jump point, and we are going to try and spot them, um, uh, so we can get some action. Now last uh, last check that they were following us to towards that direction, so we'll see what we can find. But initially, we're going to do a slow. We're going to do a slow move, um, and I think before we do anything else, I'm actually going to get um, these guys to uh, just to load ground units up into drop modules. So we have one, two, three, four, five in there so far. Uh, we'll do 57th at 6, and 7. That should be the entire wing. And then we'll move them in. Okay. Okay, there we go. So now they're loaded and waiting. So we will now move in. Water 2, of course, will be remaining um, at... Actually, no, we better bring Shell Water 2 as well. Because Shell Water 2 does have the other carrier. So we will need it if we... Um, if we need to um, do like we did with the workers and get those ships on board. The fighters, of course, can fly alongside because they don't uh, they can survive the uh, um, month or so it'll take to get back home. <clears throat> We're there eight hour jumps for the time being. Uh, never mind, we'll do one day jumps, get it, get it in a little bit faster. So, the last we saw them, they were only capable of doing about 1400 kilometers a second, which is well within our boarding speed of uh, 2000 kilometers a second. Better just equalize this fuel. That'll do. Um, which is well within our boarding envelope, so we should not have any problems. Now, I think they can uh, do damage control to try and repair them, so they might be a little bit faster uh, than that, in which case they might need another missile to knock out an engine or two, hopefully without destroying the entire ship. But uh, we'll see how we go with that once we actually get them on sensors. So we're moving in closer and closer. Mm 
Okay, our jump gate construction is complete, which I believe has. Once it turns a cycle, to have a look. <clears throat> Okay, I believe we had just finished uh, connecting Kalgoorlie to Canberra, so it will be able to do everything there. Um, we are starting to run low on fuel here. Uh, what we'll do is we will refuel off shoal water too. and then we'll return to following Crete. We do have a tanker in there from the jump tender, so we should be fine on that front. There we go, it's not complaining anymore. At least it shouldn't be complaining anymore. Uh, we can also reduce the fuel consumption by reducing the current speed as well, because at the moment they're basically just doing laps around the task groups as they're moving. So if we reduce the speed down to 2200, that should reduce the fuel consumption. There we go. <clears throat> Because don't forget, it, 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 it consumes fuel at the rate that the engines are burning. So, if you reduce, so if so, even if it's following, if it's following a slower target and it's moving substantially faster, it's going to burn fuel at that faster rate, even though the task group itself is not moving any faster. So, do make sure that if you're following along and you don't need that high speed for evasion or anything like that, uh, then. Um, set the speeds to match, or tell it to follow, ta follow, uh, or tell it to merge entirely, and that should stop it from uh, burning fuel too much. So, we'll move in. Should be detecting them any day now. Where are they? Uh, the other thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that they are in the right group. So we'll actually need to... Yes, we will... So these guys do need to be transferred to First Fleet. There we go. Uh... Alright, now, now they'll actually get the bonuses. Uh, where are they? They are, are, they, are they, okay, they're on shell water. Good. Uh, let's keep going. <clears throat> okay, so they didn't follow us any further. We would have detected them by now because it has been uh, probably about two weeks since the cut at the end of the last episode. So if they remain where they are, they should be getting picked up probably in the next cycle. There they go. Good. <clears throat> How are they on speed? Have they managed to repair any engines? Does not look like they have. So we'll get a little bit closer. I uh, think that'll do. So we will stop. And now we get to 
the risky part because we need to take our boarding ships and we need to go and board those targets. So what I'll do is I will take three Zims in each group. So split that and <clears throat> split off these. There we go. Uh, each one has a marine company, which is excellent. So we will attempt boarding action by eight, by all three. Uh, so that one's going on Cosmic Liberty. So this one needs to go on Rainbow Sky. <clears throat> and then we will return to Crete and land. Actually, we'll just move, we'll just follow at the moment because we might need to return and um, and pick up those marines if the if they turn out to be rubbish and about to fall apart. So here we go. Okay, good. They haven't repaired any engine. They're still only doing fourteen hundred. That should be only a little bit off. What a time and distance. Ugh, no, I can't read that. <clears throat> I think I did end up knocking out their sensors, which means in theory they should not be able to see this coming at all. Uh, unless I managed to repair those sensors, but we'll see. So, yeah, if we're really lucky, the first sign that they'll have that anything is about to happen is when the Marines come banging on their on their doors. <clears throat> okay, so we're dropping on Rainbow Sky first. What was that? That was... Probably contact intercept, intercepts. I'm a little bit scared about point defenses because these things are not very well armored. But all right, so 53rd Marine Company has boarded. And because the armor has been damaged by our missiles, um, they don't have to blow charges. Um, they can just enter through the holes in the armor. So attacking forces have su successfully penetrated the armor and combat is underway. So you do get... Um, so, so combat in planets is on a five-day cycle. So the production cycle is when it updates. On ships, it's five minutes, so 300 seconds, uh, between from the, when the boarding has begun. So the next marine company um, should be dropped. Ooh, they're, they're attempting to ram. That is not very good. Okay, what I might do is I might take Crete 3 and actually split them into individual ships. Uh, is there a split? There is, but not where it is. Okay, so... Hmm. No, that's fine. So we'll just have to split them manually. So if we split them up into separate groups, uh, then we can have them all drop at the same time. So Cosmic Liberty. Um, there we go. 
So a Cosmic Liberty attempt boarding action with 57th Marine. Good. And then return to Crete. And this one, attempt boarding and return to Crete. And this one, attempt boarding and return to Crete. So, yeah. So it is best, hopefully, um, with the speed, they won't be able to actually ram it because um, we're so much faster. But all right, so they've all three have been successfully dropped onto Rainbow Sky. So our ship, so our three Zims there should be uh, bugging out now. As soon as their orders are acknowledged. There we go. All right, so now they're bugging out. Yeah, we lost the thermal contact, but that's to be expected. All right, these guys are... Okay, something there has gone wrong, but oh well. <clears throat> How far off are we before the next update? 135 seconds. So we should be able to see what's happening with Rainbow Sky before we attempt the next boarding. 45 seconds to go. There we go. How are we doing? Attack strength is 14 with a combat ratio of 9.4. So, yep, we are doing really well. There is minimal crew and uh, we have a lot of of marines on board so we are so just like with ground combat we do have to wait for them to uh, eventually take over the ship so ideally we do not want to be shooting at it so we'll wait for the next report which will be now and bingo that is seizure so as you can see uh second round of combat uh rainbow sky one has been captured by boarding combat 57 alien prisoners taken during capture brilliant and interrogations have been carried out so this is exactly the same as if you had captured life pods uh you conduct interrogations and it adds um espionage points once you accumulate enough of them through taking prisoners then you can discover various things either technologies or components or systems or whatever right so let's have a look at our little prize jd fact killer nine uh let's have a look at it through the ship view so jd fact killer here it is okay so it's a jump destroyer all right, so we have, so it's 6,000 Ks capable, or 5,700 Ks capable. Um, it's got a reasonable maintenance life. Hooray. So that means that we, it won't fall apart on us. Um, magnetic fusion drive, four of them. So that's going to be good salvage. Military jump drive, we might be able to learn something out of that. Um, Fuel capacity, so we're going to ha potentially pick up a little bit of fuel. Yeah, we've got a bit of fair amount of fuel. Uh, we've got some Qs, which will be some okay tech out of that probably. Uh, missile launchers, missile fire controls, uh, anti-ship missiles. So we have the specifications of their anti-ship missiles as well, uh, even though I don't think there are any in there any anymore. Yeah, they've, they've already exhausted their missiles, but we already knew that. Uh, we've got some more ECM components, which is fantastic. Uh, active research, we've got sensors, both thermal and EM, which is okay. And yeah, uh, no shields, but, but we knew that. And eight layers of armor. Wow, okay. So, that's interesting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 
That has some very interesting damage profiles. Really not sure what's happening with the armor. Um, I, I found that when you board a ship, the armor display tends to go a little bit numpty. Um, so, because uh, I boarded a ship with three layers of armor once after beating the ever-loving snot out of it, and all it had was the three columns from the mort from the marine boarding parties, you know. And uh, I, I don't really know what's happening with that. I think the armor display get goes a little bit weird, or the enemy armor is calculated a little bit differently. I don't know what's going on, but um, there we go. So what do we end up knocking out? Well, we got compressed carbon armor, so that's... I think that's better than ours at the moment. So we might be able to get some tech out of that. Uh, we knocked out a crew quarters. We knocked out fuel storage. Uh, we knocked out the ECM. So we're definitely going to have to do repairs before we disassemble this thing. Uh, sensor and three of the engines have been knocked out as well. So yeah, we're definitely going to have to do repairs on this before we can send it on its way. Uh, annual failure rate for the current ship is absolutely astronomical though. So I believe that we will send this thing to dock. Um, but it is a 10,000 ton ship, which means that it might not be capable. Um, we have maintenance supplies, so we could potentially re refuel, re grab maintenance supplies off another ship to get it back home. So, uh, we'll see what we can do. First and foremost, get it to the shell water. And uh, we'll join it. Good. Alright. Next. We've got our next boarding crew. Um, yeah, we've got plenty of spare berths as well. So, that'll be fine. <clears throat> Alright, we got thermals, and drop. So, as you can see, because we have three separate task groups, we now have uh, all three dropped at the same time. So our Zims can bug out as soon as they are capable. There they go. So now we will wait for combat reports. Okay, haven't taken it yet. Probably going to need another combat, another round of reports to actually seize it. Uh, let's have a look at intelligence display at the moment, by the way. So we've got Cairns Aliens, and we've got Rainbow Sky, I think it is. Yeah, Rainbow Sky was the one. What's really annoying is that you don't actually get any actual information out of them. Like, you don't have weapons and sensor data. You don't get anything like that. You don't get the class summary. So what we might do is for the Rainbow Sky, which we know, this, we know this one was a Rainbow Sky, we will actually take the class here, and we will add it in here. There. So now we have the entire class summary because we know this is exactly what it is, right? We don't have to find anything out. We know what it is. We know it because we've captured it. We've been, we've been able to assess the class. So now that we have it, we can rename it. Um... There we go. We can rename it to to that. And it's decided to get rid of that. Okay, fine. Yeah. Okay. Has it saved it? No, it has not. Oh well. Maybe it might, it might it might appear when we actually disassemble it, so we'll see. Alright, waiting for capture. There we go.
and we've taken another 55. Um, I find that on average you need probably about three to 500, um, uh, three to 500 uh, prisoners per little piece of information. Um, so we, we we definitely won't get anything out of these guys, not yet. Uh, Cosmic Liberty 1 has been captured. Which one is it? Uh, we know it's not Fat Killer J. What is it? It's JD Longsword. So... JD Longsword. Ah, here we go. Alright, so what's this one? Looks to be about the same. What's the difference? That one's got a little bit extra, tiny little bit extra fuel. And this one has an EM sensor. So the Fat Killer has an EM sensor, and the Longsword has a tiny little bit of extra fuel. Uh, looks like the Longsword also has a longer, longer range fire control as well. Um, and the longer, longer sensor. So better sensor technology overall, which means we might actually get something out of them. Um, and this one's got an EM sensor as well. So um, not too bad. Not not a bad haul. It's a pretty good haul. We, we should get some decent tech out of them, out of these guys. So longsword, longsword. We also want you to join Shellwater. So I'll wait for them to return. Where are they going? Ah, because Shellwater is following, so stop following. But we can get these guys to join Shellwater as well, so uh, that's fine. And Zim 4 can land. So we're not going to be landing our captured ships, so we can just land, land these guys home. Uh, Crete land and land land don't follow just land land and Land. Okay, that should have them all land safely. There we go. So with the with the amount of maintenance supplies that we have on board, we should be able to keep them go going for a while. Uh, and that we should be able to return them home. Ah, uh, Shellwater 2 has... Go join. Now, this still begs the question, where the heck did they come from? Because they came from they, they came from around here, right? Um, so we're in Rockhampton, right? They, they could have come through Townsville. They obviously didn't come from Seoul, but they could have come from Cairns or Townsville. So wherever they're coming from, um, well, obviously, it has to be somewhere, unless the game is just sp basically spawning them on top of us. So, we'll have to wait and see um, exactly what happened there. 
we'll have to just wait for them to arrive. And when they do, we will be able to... Uh, we lost a missile launcher, but that's fine. Okay, good. Now they're docked. So, what we'll do is we will take the Zems and we will load up our six marine companies. Put them back on board. Good. Um, and as for the shoal water, uh, we will take the these guys and we are going to begin damage control on our engines so we need 275 MSP and we have uh, 383 capacity so we should be able to do all the repairs we need except for the armor of course um, for this one once again We'll do the three uh, engines. We don't care about anything else. Uh, we can do those repairs at the shipyard. We don't want to burn the maintenance supplies. So we need. We do need to transfer across the maintenance supplies, though. Here we go. So we will take them from a carrier, which should be... Not the fighters, they'll... I never have enough. What shall I want to do? Let's take them for shell water. Okay. So we'll transfer as much as we can. There we go. And again, there we go. So we'll have to wait for the for Crete to finish repairs. But we have got some engines back up and running now. Uh, we'll go ahead and... Resupply, there we go. <clears throat> It's going to take a while for uh, things to transfer across the troops. But Fat Killer J has finished repairing an engine. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, long sword has fixed another engine. Uh, yeah, we've got one left to go. So we will take it from this guy. There we go. Uh, better make sure that they're both still repairing. No, they're not. Begin. Okay. No more repairs just yet. And those engines back online, we'll let the fleet get back home as well uh, in a reasonable amount of time.
Oh, that's going to take him ages. Uh, what I might do... Oh, hi, we can build these now. That's interesting. That's exploitative. That is very interesting. Um, okay, now we can't actually build them straight up. Good, good, good. Because, uh, you know, then you can find the ship that has some super high-tech engine and then just build, repeat, put that ship, put that sh ship on repeat build or just build it repeatedly, disassemble, dismantle it, and then reassemble the engines because the shipyard can um, build a ship without you having to pre-build the components, right? So if you build the ship straight up, the shipyard will build it. It'll take a while, but it'll build it. And then you can, and then you can, um, dismantle it into its separate components and then disassemble that component to uh, get the research points. So that would be exploitative. Thankfully, um, that is not the case. So that, that at least that part makes sense. So that should be good for now. Um, it's the time's running, the time's up. So we'll put a cut, I'll put a cut in the episode here. Um, uh, well, I'll continue. I'll get these patched back up and then head back home. And then from there, we will continue on the next episode. So thank you for watching and I will see you tomorrow.